Our goal in this video is to determine the return air humidity ratio and the mixed air humidity ratio in single duct air handling units. And this is important when it comes to doing bin energy calculations uh, in a simplified steady state manner. So let me first start by drawing a little schematic of our air handling unit and the zones that it is serving. So now I have this quick schematic and let me explain a little bit about it. This is how a, a very simplified diagram of an air handling unit. We bring in fresh outside air. We mix it with some of the air that was already in the space. We call it return air. And when that mixing process happens, we have something called mixed air. And we then use a fan and uh, typically a cooling coil when you need cooling in the summer months. And we get supply air. And that supply air is conditioned. We would say that's air conditioned. And it can serve different zones. And loosely speaking, a zone is an area of the building that has a similar temperature profile or similar uh, heat gain profile. And for our bin simulations or bin spreadsheets, we're going to be focusing on an internal zone and external zone. So external zone would be those zones near the exterior of a building that are weather dependent. And the interior zones of your building typically are not weather dependent. So the goal of this video is to figure out what the humidity ratio would be here and what the humidity ratio would be here. Now, there's a few assumptions we'll have to make about what we already know. We assume we, we know what the outdoor air humidity ratio is. This is going to be something f that you can you look at past weather patterns or you can look at the current value of outdoor air humidity. You can calculate it from dew point temperature, things like this. We assume that we'll know the, uh, the supply air flow. And we'll do this in volumetric units. So this, these supply flows are typically in units of cubic feet per minute. We will also know the fraction of outside air that we're bringing. So the percentage of outside air to return air, and we're going to call that fraction X, OA. And we'll see how that plays a role in a second. Another item that we need to know is what this supply air temperature needs to be. Because this will determine when we are condensing water out what the humidity ratio is here at the supply air, at the supply air end, what omega SA would be. So we're going to start with the understanding that these spaces or these zones are actually adding some amount of moisture. So I'll draw a teardrop shape here, I guess, like something like this. This is moisture. People are expelling water vapor into the air, and that's something that will cause a latent load on the system. Now, if you have watched a previous video, we have some formulation that takes a latent load in units of BTU per hour that will give us a change in humidity ratio and that formula I'm going to use a little different number than I explained in that video I'm going to use a little different assumptions but we're going to use 4840 CFM Delta Omega so you often see these latent loads given in BTU per hour even though it's really more appropriate to talk about the mass of water vapor being expelled into a space because you can do mass balances on the water vapor but you can think of this latent load variable here in BTU hours as a surrogate for that amount of moisture being added to the space. So let's say that we know we have a latent load for the interior and the exterior and so I'll put subscripts we have some Q latent load total which I'm just going to neglect that from here on out we'll just understand that this is the total so if we want to know the delta difference in the humidity ratio across from here to here that delta omega or delta omega added we're saying we're adding moisture that is just going to be if I take this variable and this variable and I move them underneath here 
we have the total latent load divided by our constant 4840 and the amount of dry airflow we have through the space and so remember this all has units associated with it this is BTU per hour cubic feet per minute and this is the total CFM going through the single duct system so we have this amount of moisture added in the space but that still doesn't get us to this point and I need to come up and describe a little bit about what we're gonna a problem we're gonna run into a problem we're gonna run into is that we don't know whether across this cooling coil we are condensing any water out so if this coil is cold enough you will actually start to see moisture come off this coil this is just the same fundamental process when you see dew on your car you are below the dew point temperature of the air and so you will start to actually see water droplets form and so if you're in that case we say this coil is wet and you will have less water vapor on this side than you would on this side so there is some delta omega loss if the coil is wet now if the air is dry enough you will actually see no condensation across here and we'll say that that means you have a dry cooling coil and so we really have two conditions that we're going to look at separately and what we'll find is we can do a calculation for either of these and then the resulting omegas will just simply be the minimum level because we know that if things were dry but they're the humidities end up being too high that they would have been wet anyways and so that assumption holds so let's begin by assuming the wet case because I believe that's that's actually an easier case to solve so if the cooling coil is wet one nice thing we know is that this air coming off this coil is saturated or near saturation so it's a lot of times a good assumption of the entire airstream is that it's at 90% relative humidity coming off the coil and has some supply temperature. And if you know something about psychrometrics, if you have a temperature and you have a relative humidity, that can lead you to an omega value. So you just have to do some psychrometrics. And I'm going to use this subscript, omega supply air under the wet condition. So if we assume that the coil is wet, we automatically have set this humidity ratio. And that actually makes solving for our omega return air, we'll say this this is also equivalent to right here, we have omega return air. All we have to do is we know how much moisture is added in the zones through this formula here, this omega added. And so solving for omega of the return air is just the omega of the supplier plus that delta omega we added in the space and that's it so we have our our first item now let's go ahead and go through the dry case a little more tricky to solve if the coil is dry we can, oh, I made a mistake here this whole time. This is omega of the mixed air. This is return air. Return air is mixing with outside air to get mixed air. If the coil is dry, this absolute humidity ratio will equal this humidity ratio. The mixed air humidity ratio equals the supply air. And so that's our first assumption. So now we can do a similar thing. We, we know we're going to try and solve for our omega ra so in this case omega ra is equal to in this case remember the supplier temperature is equal to our mixed air so we have mixed air plus delta omega added now here's where the confusing part lies we don't have a specified value so here in the wet case we knew what this supplier humidity ratio was but here this mixed air humidity ratio actually depends 
on this value. And so this is not, we can't, we can't directly solve for this. So the last piece of the puzzle we need, we need another equation that relates them to. And the equation that we have is the mixing equation. So we, we have a fundamental relationship of the mixing between outdoor air, return air, and mixed air. And this is just a simple linear mixing problem. If you don't understand where this comes from, I have another video on this topic. And so we also know that the mixed air is equal to the return air plus the outdoor air fraction is a zero to one value of the outside air minus the same return air. So if the outdoor air fraction is one, when you distribute this, you'd get one of the OA and you'd get this canceling with this. You have one minus one. And so, and if you have zero, obviously this whole term goes to zero and you're just left with the return air. And so that makes sense. It's a linear, linear relationship between these two. But the nice thing is that we know that value. And so we actually have two equations and two unknowns at this point. We don't know that and we don't know that. And they show up here, here, and here. So but we have two equations so we can still solve for the return error. So let me go ahead and do that algebra. I'm going to skip no steps. So what I want to do first is I'm going to rearrange this equation for mixed air. So if you can imagine taking this term and subtracting it on this side and putting it into here, we would get something on this side that looks like omega RA minus delta omega added is equal to omega RA plus X away omega away minus omega return air. And if you notice that term will cancel with that term. These are, this is an equal sign. Let me draw it a little better. And let me distribute this side out. So I have minus delta omega add here. And now I have X OA omega OA minus X OA omega RA. And this is the term we're trying to solve for. So imagine if I took this term over to here and this term over to here, I have X OA omega RA is equal to x oa omega oa plus delta omega added from the space divide both sides by x oa and we get our final formula for the return error absolute humidity ratio so that x oa cancels i get just the outside air plus the omega added in the space divided by that outside air fraction. And if I want to go one step further, if I take this term and put in what we had to start, that omega added was this term here, I would get something that looks like, let me keep the right colors, still omega OA plus, if you have x OA, but then this term becomes simply that Q latent multiplied by 4840 multiplied by CFM. And so it's kind of an interesting formula. Our return air absolute humidity ratio in the dry condition, remember this is all when we assumed that the coil was dry. We weren't dehumidifying there. In that case, we simply are adding this term to our outdoor air humidity ratio and it deals with the fraction of air and your total load. But no point do you see a mixed air or supply air in here. So that, I always find that kind of interesting. So we now have two different calculations for return air. We have this one here, which is a little more straightforward, and also this one. I hope it's not too much of a stretch for you to understand that the the return air actual, the actual case will simply be the minimum of the, the different cases, dry and wet. Because if you think about it, 
if you are dry, that's fine. You have low humidity. But if you were operating under the dry circumstances, but this humidity grows too large, you know you would have never gotten it because you would have already been wet. Basically, the wet case sets your upper bound. At no point can anything be more humid than that. And so if your calculation is telling you that, then it must not be correct and that the other one is truly correct. So this is our final formulation. And if you wanted the omega mixed air, you can simply use that mixing formula that we had here. This is still completely valid in both cases. So this is, this is always valid. And so we have both our return air, actual, and our mixed air for the single duct case. Dual duct case is a little different, and we may cover that in a future video, but the process stays very similar. So I hope you enjoyed that video, and we'll see you in the future.